Welcome! This serves as the part 2 of the signalized intersection tutorial for VISM presented by Kapali Pomona. From the previous video, you learned how to create a network geometry for an intersection and how to assign right-of-way to solve conflict areas within the network geometry. In this video, you will learn how to program a simple ring barrier traffic signal controller, which is commonly used for intersections with detectors. Traffic signal controllers are computer programmed with multiple timers and rules for each timer and movement. From the top toolbar, select Signal Control, then select Signal Controllers to open the Signal Controller Signal Groups window. There are various types of signal controllers such as Fixed Time and Ring Barrier Controller. As mentioned earlier, we will be focusing on programming a Ring Barrier Controller or RBC. Right-click within the Signal Controllers window and click Add. Enter a meaningful name for your signal controller. For this tutorial, I will use Kellogg slash South Campus Drive. In the type box, select Ring Barrier Controller. Then select Edit Signal Groups to open the Ring Barrier Controller Edit window. In this window, you can modify the programming parameters for a single RBC traffic signal. On the left side of the window, you can see a tree of parameter groups. For this tutorial, we will use some of the parameters to configure our traffic signal. Click on Base Timing and check the box for Timing by Signal Group, Basic, Sequence, Conflict Signal Groups, and Overlaps. Then click on Detectors and check the box for Vehicles and Q. This is an actual sample of the signal timing for Kellogg and South Campus Drive. We will keep referring to this timing sheet to simulate our intersection. As you can see, we have the phase diagram and some of the setup settings for a simple RBC traffic signal. We also have the basic timing settings for the traffic signal for our study intersection. In the Ring Barrier Controller window, enter the timing parameters for the intersection. For the signal group number, assign the phase numbers used from the timing sheet I showed earlier. We will use the assigned numbers when we are putting the signal heads in our network. For this intersection, we have eight different phases. For the signal group name, enter the appropriate movement for each signal group number. For the first one, enter northbound left, then southbound through, westbound left, eastbound through, southbound left, northbound through, eastbound left, and lastly, westbound through. Note that we are following the NEMA convention to assign the face numbers from our intersection, and each movement is based on the document I showed earlier. Use the timing sheet I showed earlier to enter the values for minimum green, vehicle extension, maximum one, yellow, and red clearance. Minimum green is the minimum green time that the signal group will serve before changing to yellow. Vehicle extension is the allowed time between successful vehicle extensions before a signal group will change. Max 1 is the maximum time that the signal group can extend to before it max out. Yellow time is typically 3 to 4 seconds, while red clearance is 1 second. Based on the timing sheet I showed earlier, southbound through and northbound through movements goes under minimum recall. Therefore, check the box for minimum recall under southbound through and northbound through movements. This allows the assigned signal group to receive an automatic vehicle call when they are not green. Then check the box for maximum recall for all the signal groups. This allows the signal groups to receive automatic vehicle call and an extension. The sequence section allows you to organize your phase diagram for this traffic signal. It is typical for phases to have two rings. For ring 1, assign signal numbers 1 to 4. For ring 2, assign signal numbers 5 to 8. Then double click between signal numbers 2 and 3 and 6 and 7. This allows you to create a ring barrier. The conflict signal groups area allows you to assign which phases are not allowed to go with other phases. For example, southbound left cannot go with northbound through movement. Once you have figured out which movements are not allowed to go with each other, your window should be similar to mine. For this intersection, eastbound right movement is allowed when northbound left turn is allowed. This means that we will have an overlap for this intersection. Under overlaps, assign number 13 for overlap signal group and for parent, assign 1, which is a signal group number for northbound left movement. Once you have configured the section for base timing, you will see the signal timing diagram under timing. Right click and select resize to fit screen. Under vehicle detectors, assign detector numbers 1 to 8 since we have 8 signal groups. We will use the appropriate detector numbers later when we are putting detectors on our intersection. Make sure that the detector modes are no disconnect, which means the detector will extend the signal timing for that signal group to its vehicle extension time. 
the added initial mode should be disabled for all detectors. Under Q Detection, assign the vehicle detected numbers for 1 to 8. Make sure that control and action parameters are both none. Then click OK to close the Ring Bearer Controller Edit window. Then save your Signal Controller file. Then click OK again to close the Signal Controller window. When you have two or more traffic signals near each other, roughly 1,000 feet or less, the traffic signal should be timed such that the major flow of vehicles pass through each of the intersections with as little delay as possible. The traffic signals can be programmed to work together with common and related settings so that this is accomplished. This technique is known as coordination. Right-click on the signal control you just modified and select Edit. Then select Edit Signal Groups to open the Ring Bearer Controller window. Under Pattern 1 on the left side of the Ring Bearer Controller window, set Cycle Length and Offset to 0. Set the Max Green Mode to Max Inhibit so that it will ignore Basic Phase Max and serve the split. Set the Permissive Mode to Single Band so that any signal group with demand may be served. Set the Pedestrian Permissive Mode to Yield so that pedestrian groups will be served when called. Set the Walk Rest Mode to Yield so that pedestrian groups will terminate with their phase. Set the Explicit Force Offs to Off so that the splits for coordination will be used. Set the Explicit Permissing to Off so that Vism will calculate the permissive windows automatically. Set the Alternative Pattern 1 and 2 to None so that an alternate pattern is not triggered. Under the tree parameters, click on Base Timing, then Patterns and Coordination, and check Pattern 1. For splits, enter the total time for each signal group. This means sum up the green, yellow, and red time for each signal group. For Coordinated and Max Recall, place a check mark for signal group 2 and 6, which are the southbound through and northbound through movements. Under the tree parameters, check Pattern Schedule. Under Pattern Schedule, set the pattern number to 1 to use Pattern 1. For the pattern start time, set this to zero so that the pattern begins at the start of your simulation. Then click OK to close the RBC edit window, then click OK again to edit signal control window. Thank you for watching! Do not forget to save your file to save the changes you have made. Be sure to watch the next video to learn how to input network objects such as signal heads and detectors in our network geometry.